All right, that's incision there. All right, let me have a kit nurse, please. Oh, no, right there. I'll pull towards you a little bit. There we go. All right, go a little bit deeper there. Okay, relax a little bit, right there. What's up guys, Dr. Antonio Webb here. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. Today, we're doing a cervical artificial disc replacement. This is a procedure that is done to replace the cushions in the neck uh, with artificial ones. This is usually done to relieve the pressure that's on the spinal cord and nerves that could be causing pain and radiating pain down the patient's arm. So this is a really delicate procedure. The stakes are really high and uh, we're hoping for a successful outcome for this patient today. And uh, yeah, look, looking forward to it. Should be a great case. Want to stay right there, Ellen. I was going to confirm in the disc space. I didn't want to stick it until we uh, confirmed that. Go out there. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, go north, please. That's the key magnet for me. So look at it and uh, take a look and see where the midline is. I think it's a little bit towards me. That's what it looks like when I look in here. All right, now the bogey, please. Okay, and this there. Pull towards you. Have a narrow run, dear. Okay, there you go. All right, let's get that retractor again. All right, let's get a cast bar fan, please. It just looked larger for some reason. Shoot. Okay. Another fan. Shot, please. So this is the uh, the disc that we're removing here. This uh, patient has severely uh, tight spinal cord and uh, pyramidal stenosis, which means that his uh, nerve root is really tight. He presented to my office with uh, really severe neck and arm pain. We're cleaning out the uh, the disc now, removing the the disc, performing the discectomy portion. We have our cast bar pins in. These are the pins that are in the vertebral body. And I opened up the disc space, three kerosene. And then I'm working all the way back towards the spinal cord. And we're gonna decompress his spinal cord and nerves at this level. So we're at the C6, C7 level at this point. So we'll be able to run a motor like in 10 minutes. Right now I'm just removing this bone here. It's at the posterior aspect of his vertebral body, kind of at the uh, end plates posteriorly. And what this does is it gives, gives me a great view of the uh, his spinal cord, which is right under there. And that's where he has all the compression at. I'm just working my way across. So what I'm doing now is just moving all of the posterior aspect of the vertebral body that's compressing it. I'm working right on top of his spinal cord here. So 
so this is the uh, arthroplasty device here. It has a uh, center kind of core and has these little spikes into the implant and that will uh, grow into the bone over the next few weeks. Oops. Pretty. It feels like it's pretty good fit too. Yeah, I, I think I'm okay with that placement there. I like it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get a, a cast board in. Driver empty. So now we're going to the C5, C6 level. This is the level where he has the tightest compression. His nerves are severely tight. Has a C6 radiculopathy, which means he has a pain that's radiating down the arm. Bovey, please. A C6 distribution. This is the level where I need to pay attention to that left side where most of his complaints are. This is the spinal cord right here, this bluish structure. This is the PLL, and I have my hook of my kerosene right under the lip of the PLL. I'm just biting it, removing that ligament, so I can uh, effectively decompress the spinal cord. All right, nerve hook. His MRI showed that he had pretty severe nerve compression on this left side over here, which he does. I'm just making more space for that nerve right now. Nerve hook, please. Right now, I'm just checking to make sure my decompression is uh, thorough and adequate. And more flow seal. So this is a steroid medication right here. I'm just putting, putting it right on top of his uh, trachea and esophagus. Oh, pick up please. And this little, it's called a gel foam. It's like a little spongy substance here. It has some steroids on it. And it's also a um, medication called thrombin to help with the uh, bleeding postoperatively. Okay. So we're placing a little drainage catheter in the patient's neck. This will, uh, if any fluid decides to accumulate, this will collect it and it puts it into a little reservoir so it's not staying inside of his neck. We'll pull this before he leaves the hospital tomorrow. So we did the whole surgery through, it's like a, about a three and a half centimeter incision, almost four, four or so, a four centimeter incision. So, can get him off the recovery now. Thank you. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. So this is the, the lateral view, looking at it from the side here. This is C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we replaced the, the cushions and took the pressure off his spinal cord at these two levels here. This is what it looks like um, from the A to P, uh, the distal placement, kind of right down the center here. So uh, postoperatively, we'll get him up and start walking later this afternoon. Most patients that have this surgery, uh, they're in the hospital for probably less than 23 hours. So it's 3.30 in the afternoon, he'll go home tomorrow morning and off to recovery. But recovery for this is uh, about four to six weeks, so a quicker recovery than a fusion. And as I, as I was mentioning, there are a lot of different advantages to a disc replacement over a fusion, and that's maintain, maintenance of your motion, um, quicker recovery. It decreases the chance that you'll need further surgery in the future. And uh, yeah, most importantly, um, you know, we help him with his neck and arm pain.